Ixia, a leader in performance analysis solutions, presents the IX Network video tutorial series. IX Network is Ixia's flagship software application for testing the network infrastructure, including all devices like routers, switches, network access controllers, broadband access, carrier Ethernet, and data center Ethernet. It's used by professionals around the world, including development and system test engineers, network design and support engineers, and even marketing and sales to demonstrate product capabilities and performance. This video tutorial is brought to you by the IX Network Product Management Team. This video tutorial will demonstrate how to use IX Network Service Modeling Capability to validate provider core routers cross policy based on NPOS EXP bits. Furthermore, it will show you how to automatically set the NPOS tunnel EXP bits based on simulated IP services. Chapter 1 will review the test objective and topology. Chapter 2 will show you how to quickly use Layer 3 NPOS VPN wizard to configure Ixia ports to emulate provider edge routers with Layer 3 VPN services. Chapter 3 will show you how to use the powerful advanced traffic wizard to configure flow groups to simulate IP services with specific marking of paths and MPOS EXP values. Lastly, Chapter 4 will demonstrate how to validate BUT's cross policy by dynamically varying the frame rates of simulated flow groups. You can expect the BUT's ability to protect high priority services when the congestion is happening. Chapter 1 Test Overview the DUT in this tutorial is a provider core router with CWAS policy based on MPOS EXP bits. The test objective is to validate DUT's ability to provide high priority services to MPOS tunnel with EXP bits set to 2 and 5 when under congestion. In addition, we will validate DUT's rate limiting capability to 100 megabits per second on best effort tunnel, which is MPOS EXP equals zero. In this test configuration, we will use three Ixia ports to emulate three PE routers. Behind the emulated PE routers, we will emulate two VPNs, A and B, as illustrated in, this, in the picture. We will simulate IP traffic coming from VPN A behind PE1 router over VPN a behind destination PE3 router. The traffic will then carry two classes of services marked by IP paths 0 and 5, which will be automatically remarked by PE1 to carry MPOS EXP 0 and 5. Similarly, we will simulate IP traffic coming from VPN B behind PE2 router toward VPN B behind destination PE3 router. The traffic will carry two classes of services marked by IP paths 0 and 2, which will be automatically remarked by PE2 to carry MPOS tunnel EXP 0 and 2. Chapter 2, Control Plane Configurations. In this configuration, we would use three Ixia ports to emulate PE routers with VPN A and B. We would first bring up protocol wizards to ease the configurations. We will pick layer 3 VPN wizard. As you see right here, I have three PE123 uh, configuration has been saved, so we can use that as an example. Double click uh, the PE1, or you can click from wizard to start up a new configuration. So in this particular configuration, since we emulate three independent PEs, uh, we will need to run the wizard three times to emulate each PE router. So just double click PE1. The first config is select the core you want to emulate provider side. In this case, the Ixia port will emulate PE routers. Click Next. We will take the first port, 1.7, to emulate PE1. The next step 
is to enter appropriate protocol options and IP addresses to match BUT's configuration. And we will assume user will enter the similar setting throughout the rest of the wizard. The next screen will enter the number of PE router emulator port. The number is 1. Again, the appropriate addresses to match DUT config. Next, we will enter the number of VPN per PE. In this case, it's 1. And also, we will set the uh, VPN traffic ID as auto prefix. And later on, we will show you how to override this value to match VPN A and B as we indicated in the picture. But for now, leave it as an auto prefix and we will fix that later. Click next and enter PE1 and you will select generate and override existing configuration. Click finish. So we will repeat the same thing for port 2 and then the third Pixia port and they will emulate PE2 and PE3. So we will show you the pre-configured wizard as an example. PE2 uh, will be the second port, 1.8, emulating provider side. So you go through the similar setting here. And again, I'll leave the uh, traffic group ID as auto prefix. We will manually override later. Generate and click Finish to configure ports. We'll repeat the same thing for the third XCR port to emulate PE3. Next. Next. In this case, the PE3 has both VPN A and VPN B behind it. So the number of VPN per PE is 2. And we'll leave the auto prefix checked as well. Next, generate and override existing config. Click finish. Click close to get out of wizard config menu. Next step will go to routing and switching. And we will need to fix the specific traffic group ID. We will click traffic groups and these are the traffic group ID automatically created by wizard. In this case uh, it will not directly matching our VPA, VPN A and B association. So we will manually add two more. We'll, we'll call them VPN A and VPN B. We'll go back to routing and switching config. Select BGP. We'll select uh, VRF. Scroll to the right. As you can see on the target list, the first one is actually represent VPN A. This is coming from the first XIA port that simulates VPN A. The second one has a different target list, 65001-2. This actually is represent VPN B. We can label it as a VPN B. And the last two emulated VRFs, VRFs are behind the third XIA port. So we will set them as VPN A to match the target list of VPN A and also VPN B to match the second target list. Later on, this traffic group ID could be used to filter out the needed endpoint for traffic stream configurations and also could be used for tracking 
the individual flow group based on uh, traffic group ID. So it's a very powerful way and fast way to track individual traffic coming from VPN sites. So now we finish the portable configuration. We will click the uh, start all protocol icon on the menu bar. And that will basically kick off the state machine on all three Ixia ports. We will then select statistics panel. We will validate individual protocol, make sure everything is up and running. Let's bring up OSPF LDP. and BGP. As you can see right here, we have all three BGP up and running and OSPF adjacency Next, we select statistic panel and this is where this is where we want to validate the protocol condition and session of each emulated protocol on Ixia port. We will select OSPF and make sure OSPF is up and running at full state and full neighborships. Next, we we'll select LDP. We validate three basic LDP sessions are up and running behind three Ixia ports. Lastly, we select BGP stats. Make sure the multi portable BGP sessions are configured and up running behind Ixia ports. So at this point, we have confirmed all protocol states are up and running and that Ixia port has successfully established the VPN emulation with the DUT. Chapter 3, Traffic Configurations. There are three ways to generate traffic stream in ICE Network latest release. User can select Basic Wizard, Advanced Wizard, and Quick Flow Groups. In this test configuration, we need to select Advanced Wizard for a better control on Flow Group setting to match MPOS EXP and IP TOS marking for each flow group. We select Events Wizard. From here, we will select Traffic Group Filter. Click the pull down menu here. As you can see, we have VPN A and VPN B available for selection. So we will select VPN A and click Apply Filter. What you see now, the Source Panel and des Destination Panel for Endpoint Sets has been filtered out specifically with the item that match VPN A Traffic Group IT ID assignments. We can further expand, select Port 17, and select the VPN routes behind Port 17 belong to VPN A as a source endpoint. And our destination endpoint is going to be port 19, that emulating PE3 router. And select the VPN routes behind PE3. And click the update icon here to create our first endpoint sets. Furthermore, this endpoint sets the name could be customized to reflecting what this item for. So we can click F2 and type over and set this one as VPN A to identify this endpoint sets. And click the new endpoint sets and we can 
go back to the traffic group ID. And now we're going to select BTMP, apply filter. And notice the source and destination endpoint pan panel has been changed to port 18 and 19. Where 18 containing the BTMP side innovation. So we expand on port 18. Select the VTN routes behind PE2 router as, as our source endpoint. Select port 19 again and pick the VTN routes belong to PTN site B. And click the update button. Now we have the new endpoint sets been added to the list. Again, we can select the new endpoint sets, click F2. Quickly change it to VTN B to clearly identify this endpoint sets. So, just a summary: we select the uh, uh, the endpoint sets belong to VTN A and create a traffic stream coming from port 17 to destination port 19 as a one-to-one -one source mapping, and route mapping is also one-to-one. -one. And similarly, we did the same thing to select VTMB with the same source destination endpoint one to one mapping and route mapping one to one. The source is from port 1A to destination port 19. So now we can click next. As you can see right here, by default, Traffic item level setting has been selected and both endpoint sets has been set. And in this case, since the next menu is for editing the packet contents and also cross value, in this step we need to individually configure and set each endpoint sets. So we will select the second checkpoint, encapsulation level setting. That will allow allow us to edit each VTN endpoint set individually. So we select VTN A endpoint sets. From here we have a convenient grid display with all the necessary uh, encapsulation type display in the grid here. We can quickly select for example MPOS EXP for outer tunnel, inner tunnel, and IP toss priority for IP TTL. So these are the field automatically exposed on the grid. User can also right click at the grid level and do a column chooser to in insert additional fields for this particular endpoint set. Or user can go down to the lower panel at the packet editor level and go to each individual layer, for example, IPv4 layer. And from here, user can specifically set the IP toss value to any combination they like. Sin single value, increment, decrement, or add it as a specific list. So in this example here, we will show you how to quickly and easily do it from the grid level. So we will select VTN A at the priority uh, column, click the drop down icon. We set it as a default pause. We will click and add a value 5101 for VTN A, in addition to value 0 already on the list. And click OK. And we will quickly go to the inner label EXP, click the drop down button, and we have a convenient check mark for copy directly from layer 3 IP toss. So this automatic action will read the IP toss value and set the MPLS EXP accordingly. So this essentially is emulate emulating provider edge router's capability to look up toss value 
and perform traffic classifications and set it to appropriate NTOS tunnel EXP. So we click OK. And we do the same thing for the outer tunnel. Copy from priority. And we will repeat the same thing for VPN B. Click the drop down icon for pass. In this case, we will enter additional pass value to 010 and click OK. And set the EXP bit to copy from IP toss priority for inner and also outer tunnels. So this is what we need to do uh, to set the toss value properly. Now we click next. To set up our flow group. So in this screen we will define how we will create flow groups based on a specific user set criteria. Before we make any choices, we're going to change the endpoint setting to the traffic item level. This will conveniently select all the endpoint sets representing VPN A and B. So all the selection we make here for flow grouping will apply to all endpoint sets. In this example, we are testing DUT's cross policy based on NPOS EXP. So logically, we like to generate traffic flow group based on NPOS EXP. By selecting EXP, it will allow IX network to group all the packet flow with the same NPOS EXP into a single set of flow groups. So user can dynamically change the traffic profile of each flow group to characterize DUT's ability to differentiate services. So we click Next. Frame Setup. At this step, we will set one thing, we we'll change the frame size to 128. And again, since we select the traffic item level, setting checkbox is enabled. All the setting you select here will apply to both endpoint sets, VPN A and B. We click Next. Go to Rate Setup. So we leave it as a default 10%. As a default, this 10% will apply to all ports, which means each port will get applied with 10%. You have an option to split rate even, evenly around all the selected ports. And also at the flow group level, by default, we will split the port rate evenly among flow groups. So it depends on how many flow groups generated per port. 10% is going to be evenly divided. So we leave it as a default and we click next. Flow tracking is an important step to define how IX network track the traffic flow at the destination ports. In this particular test configuration, we are interested at traffic group ID where we can track all the traffic flow based on specific VPN sites. And we are interested at MPOS EXP, specifically the outer tunnel EXP bits. And this is where we can track the flow based on specific traffic class identified by EXP bits. The next step is preview. This is a nice feature to show how traffic wizard create flow groups and how packet flows within, within each flow groups are organized in sequence. So I will click view flow group packets. Based on the previous setting, you will see 
there are two flow groups being created for each port. Port 17, where they carry the VPN A traffic, and port 18, where they carry the VPN B traffic. So there are two flow groups for each port. You can further select flow group 1 out of port 17. And you can see the exact packet sequence within flow group 1 behind port 17. As you can see here, we are sending uh, experimental EXP0 within flow group 1. You select flow group 2, the EXP become 5. And with the associated destination and source MAC addresses, and IP addresses. This is all configured based on the previous setting. You can validate the next two flow group coming from port 1A. In this case, this one is sending EXP2 and also EXP0. So exactly how we intend to do for the VPN A and VPN B traffic configurations. The last screen is an optional step to validate if we have enough hardware resource to support traffic configurations. This is especially helpful with very large traffic configurations. Users can avoid the lengthy apply process if they have to change the traffic configuration to fit in the needed hardware resource. Now we will click validate to see if our traffic configuration can fit in the existing port resource. Good. Everything is checked with the green mark. Configuration, packets, flow group, and tracking. So everything is okay. I'm going to click finish to complete the advanced traffic wizard setup. After we finish events traffic wizard configuration, now we see there are four flow groups has been added to the traffic grid. Now the next step is to click L2, L3 traffic to apply the flow group configuration to Ixia ports. Now the configuration has been successfully applied to the port. We're ready to test Q QoS of DUP. Chapter 4, Validate QoS. Now we will start traffic by clicking Start Traffic icon. We will then select Statistics in the Control Panel. select traffic item. From here you can see the traffic item 1 configured by Advanced Wizard has all the packet transmit and collected correctly at the destination port. We'll see the minimum frame lost here. You can right click on traffic item and then drill down for example per traffic group ID. This will give you further breakdown per VPN side A and B. We will have a good understanding of the condition of each VPN traffic. We can also right click traffic item and select the drill down based on MPOS EXP. Adjust the view further. This will give us a very good understanding of the uh, statistic and breakdown of each NPOS EXP. Since we are transmitting 10% from transmit port and the destination port has received totally 20% throughputs, so we don't expect 
PET to drop any packaging. We can also select data plane statistics that, you give, that will give you the further breakdown of the stats at the core level. You can select the column with best fit for the core level. As you can see from the stats here, port 7 and 8 generate traffic, and port 9 receive traffic from both the ports. And look at the frames count breakdown. It seems everything has been received properly at the destination port. And this observation can be further confirmed by the traffic item statist statistics. And you can drill down and break down to each NPOS EXP level to see the traffic statistic of each traffic class. So this will give you a very comprehensive view of what's going on with the DUT's uh, data plane performance. Now the next step is we are going to increase the loading on DUT and further validate DUT's ability to differentiate services. So in order to do that, we're going to quickly set up some view for better operation. So we're going to conduct the MPOS EXP statistics. And we will change the control back to test configurations. Now we're going to split the view horizontally between statistics and control. Right. Now we have the MPO at the EXP stats on the top, and we have a traffic stream control at the bottom. You can see each port is sending at uh, five, each flow group is sending at 5% throughputs. The, it's not creating a congestion condition at the destination TE port. So we are observing all traffic going through between three traffic classes, 0, 2, and 5. There's no packet loss observing at any one of the traffic classes. Now we can come back to the traffic grid that show four individual traffic groups. You can click the left top corner icon and we can conveniently group the flow group based on transmit port or NPOS EXP or a different um, track by condition here. You can select the selection based on uh, transmit port or based on NPOS EXP. Select by transmit port and you can see the four flow groups are now conveniently grouped by the transmit port. As you can see, port 17 is transmitting two flow groups carrying NPOS EXP0 and NPOS EXP5. And port 18 is transmitting two flow groups with NPOS EXP2 and NPOS EXP0. Now we're going to create enough stress for the DUT to be congested. So we can quickly select all flow groups by click and shift select all flow groups. And you can drag the uh, frame rate bar to a higher value. In this case, we're going to drag it all the way up to uh, somewhere around 50, over 50%. So this 53% means the total loading per port, 53.33%. That will apply to port 17, and it will be evenly divided by all the flow group belong to port 17. Similarly, for port 18, will be applied with the total port over 53.33%. And you can validate that by looking at the individual frame rate assigned 
per flow group. And you can make additional adjustment at the per flow group level by simply type over the frame rate, or you can click the drag down uh, button and type the frame rate here, or you can enter it as a specific specific uh, megabits per second. Now go back to the traffic statistics. As you can see right now, an EXP0 class is observing a very high amount of packet lost. At the same time, class 2 and class 5 are well protected with no packet lost. Furthermore, you can look at the receive throughput on the NPO at EXP0 is where below 100, is near 100 megabits per second as specified by the cross policy. So this further confirms DUT is enforcing cross policy precisely and correctly based on the configuration set by the user. So this concludes this training video. Thank you. For more information on IX Network, check out www.ixia.com. Thank you for your time and interest from the IX Network product management team. Ixia, a leader in performance analysis solutions, presents the IX Network video tutorial series. IX Network is Ixia's flagship software application for testing the network infrastructure, including all devices like routers, switches, network access controllers, broadband access, carrier Ethernet, and data center Ethernet. It's used by professionals around the world, including development and system test engineers, network design and support engineers, and even marketing and sales to demonstrate product capabilities and performance. This video tutorial is brought to you by the IX Network Product Management Team.